When the Russian Tsarist Catherine II visited the Crimea in the 1780s, the people there thought, the leaders there thought, we can't let her see what it really looks like, so we're going to actually create a portable facade. And when she would go through the town, the facade was in front of the buildings, and she would wave, and people would wave, and it all looked nice, it all looked pretty. The problem was, of course, it was a facade. It was hiding the wretched conditions of the day. And so we have this man, Mr. Khan, the lawyer from New York, whose son was sadly killed in 2004 in Iraq, a captain in the U.S. Army. And he was put on stage by the Democrats to speak to Mr. Trump about the Constitution and what a bad man Mr. Trump was. Well, it turns out that he was far more of a Potemkin Village prop than some of us thought. Now, as of this filming right now, I do not have the capacity, the time to go back into the web world. You see, they've taken down his website in which the press is reporting that he was associated, affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist organization. Make no bones about it. And its commitment is to restore the caliph, the successor of Muhammad. The caliphate was abolished in 1924 by Ataturk, the leader of Turkey. The Muslim Brotherhood was started in 1928, four years later, with the express purpose of restoring the caliphate, restoring one huge Muslim nation, restoring Sharia law, and launching jihad. That's the Muslim Brotherhood. You can read their literature for yourself. Or you can go online, go to our website and watch the series that we did, in-depth series, on the Muslim Brotherhood. So, turns out that Mr. Khan is a Khan. And the Democrats were using him to con us, just like Potemkin Village. Now, I, I want to talk about this a minute, then we're going to go on to our election. Uh, by the way, we'll also deal with this horrible terrorist attack in London in which an American woman was murdered by a man wielding a knife. ISIS says more attacks are coming. We will get to that in the next segment. But I want to talk to you about the Potemkin village element of this, the deceit. When the internet came out early on, Matt Drudge of the Drudge Report said, this is going to finally break the stranglehold of information and news that ABC, CBS, NBC, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and AP have on the entire nation. You have to remember, see, I'm old enough to remember when I would sit in front of my television with my mom and dad, and we would watch the news every night, there were three stations. That's it. You had CBS with, uh, oh, good grief, the Huntley Brinkley report you had, and you had, oh, I can't believe I can't remember his name. I apologize. Um, and then if you were lucky, you had a PBS station. Then when the, um, in, in the early 1980s, CNN emerged during the hostage crisis with Iran. And this was, this was unthinkable, that there would be a cable network with 24-hour news. And if you look at the sets back then, look at the budget, you can see why people thought, oh, come on. Well, now, a lifetime later for some people, you're looking at untold numbers of television stations, satellite TV, cable TV, digital TV with tons of stations locally. And this... This outpouring of information has effectively helped to break the stranglehold of the New York Times, Washington Post, ABC, CBS, NBC, etc. But here's the problem. People like Ruckerberg, is that how you say his name? The guy, the guy who owns Facebook. Zuckerberg, I apologize, folks. He is literally choking information away from Facebook users. Google is now been caught with their hand in a the cookie jar more than once. They're altering the search engine numbers. So if you put in something to search it, what you think would pop up might not pop up. The gatekeepers at ABC, CBS, and NBC had left-wing lunatic godless children who are now controlling the internet, the flow of data. 
They did a story the other day that Siri, you know, the Apple, the, the iPhone, if you were to talk to Siri and say, where is Hillary's America, the new movie by Dinesh D'Souza, where is Hillary's America playing locally? She would say it's not playing locally even though it was playing. That, that is, I don't want to use the word conspiracy because it's, 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 not, it's, in, it's not happening behind closed doors. It's right in front of you. This is deliberate. The people who are in the gatekeepers at Google with Siri, with Facebook, these are as anti-Christian, as, as Marxist, as foolish, idiotic supporters of Islam as the folks at ABC, CBS, and NBC ever were. That's what we're dealing with. And so when I talk about Potemkin Village, I'm talking about deceit. And that's what we have with this Khan, this Khan, Mr. Khan, all right, the Muslim dad and his wife standing there silent. They're Khan artists. They are a Potemkin Village. It's all deceit. This man, Mr. Khan, believes in Sharia law. He has written articles defending Sharia law. And for those of you who don't know the threat of Sharia law, I invite you to study Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, where they are self-consciously basing their laws upon Sharia law or ISIS. Okay? So this man, Mr. Khan, was put up there to get embroiled in a fight with Donald Trump. And this is where the, the, here's where the wild card comes in, friends, and I don't know the answer. We don't know how foolish or how ignorant the average American voter is. We know that a lot of them are foolish and ignorant. We just don't know the depth. And we don't know how lazy they become. We know that they are watching bizarre, idiotic things online and on TV. We know that they're sated. They're full of, of sports and Hollywood and hedonism. And we don't know how much that's affected their brain and their ability to think. But when people tell us that Islam is a religion of peace and when Mr. Khan gets up and says Islam has nothing to do with violence, these are lies. They're every bit as insidious and deceptive as a Potamkin village was for Catherine II. But with Catherine II, Potamkin village just meant that she felt better about her reign. With us, it's somebody allowing the insurgents to come and to be in a position to attack us. This type of idiocy, this type of folly, this type of deceit actually puts our lives in danger. Because if Hillary gets her way and has a 550% increase in the number of Syrian refugees that come into this country, do the math. Do the math. Even if one-tenth of one percent of them are directly connected to ISIS and ready to kill, how many American deaths will that entail? I'll be right back.